Hello and welcome to Are We There Yet? The podcast looking at the innovations emerging from the workshops, labs and secret test tracks of Hyundai. Across this series, we've heard about technology that is changing our world. From getting behind the cutting edge tech to the designers, scientists and engineers making crucial decisions about the future of mobility. I'm Susie Perry and this podcast comes to you from Hyundai Motor. Today, we are going green. For us, the big task is to decrease the energy consumption. We are constantly working on implementing new technologies, which has lower energy demands. Sustainability is one of the biggest challenges of our age. The mobility sector has a huge opportunity to make all of our lives greener with electric vehicles, new materials and technology, enabling us to consume fewer resources. But equally important is the industry's own sustainability commitments. And the change since I slid into the driving seat and walked out of the driving test centre with my charge of independence is absolutely monumental. So in this edition, we're asking how sustainable the business is and how far it can go. Joining me is a person at the forefront of sustainability at Hyundai. Peter Michnik is Head of Administration at Hyundai Motor Manufacturing Czech. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Susie. It's uh, great to be here. Thanks. Since we started the podcast, sustainability has really moved up the agenda. We've had COP26, extreme weather events are more common now. Climate change is more obvious than it's ever been before. How important a concept is sustainability for Hyundai from a factory point of view? Well, sustainability has always been one of the most important points in constructing our factory and starting our operation and during the already several years of our production. But I think that currently it's getting more and more importance, especially because we are transitioning our energy consumption into 100% of renewable energy. So this is something which aligns us with the vision of Hyundai Motor Group Progress for Humanity. Also, it fits with our goal to be carbon neutral by 2045. That's pretty incredible. And we're very lucky to have you because you're able to give us a glimpse of the future, really. The Hyundai Motor Manufacturing Czech plant will be the company's first factory to completely convert its electricity usage to renewable energy. So can you introduce the plant for us and the challenge ahead? Well, the idea of Hyundai having the factory in Europe was established sometime in 2005, 2006 when also the investment agreement with Czech Republic was signed. And soon after we started the construction and the production is running since 2008. So far, we've produced almost 4 million new vehicles. We export them to more than 70 countries, although our primary market is uh, Europe. And maybe the best idea about our plant will give you when I tell you that every single minute there is one new car leaving our production line. Every minute, five days per week, 24 hours per day. And of course, we are talking about sustainability. So this is something which goes through the whole production process. It's not only about energy consumption, it's about the placement of our factory in the surroundings. It's about our responsibility to our neighbors, I mean, the neighboring municipalities. It's about our obligations to our employees to our suppliers and uh, other many and many stakeholders. I'm just blown away by the fact that there's one car every minute coming out. I'm really stuck on that fact. That's sensational. But the key, obviously, is to decrease energy consumption. What would you say are the, the main features or characters of the factory that make it different? Well, our factory needs uh, a lot of energy, especially the electricity and the gas. How to make the production both effective and at the same time, make it environmentally friendly. That's why we invest really since the very beginning, and we are still a very young factory. I, I said that the production started only less than 14 years ago, and already at that time, of course, we had the state-of-the-art technologies. But I would say that from the, let's say, second year, we keep improving, and we still try to find the ways how to save and where can we save the energy to be more environmentally friendly. You know, Czech Republic... Uh, 
is very keen on its beer production. We think our beer is the best in the world. Some countries may not、yeah. agree, but but that's what we think. And just across the field from our factory is one of the biggest Czech breweries. Part of their beer production is also the production of malt, which requires the fresh air. I'm not an expert on on beer production, but it really needs some fresh air going through that process. And obviously, when we decided to build the factory here, we faced many many questions from the brewery. Hey, what about the air? Will it be still clear? They were really afraid of what could be the impact. But we really managed to explain them, to show them the numbers about our technology, which is really super. And it has been already in that time environmentally super friendly and. I can only confirm that、uh, during those years, the the taste of the beer is still still the same, and we have、uh, very good relations with our beer manufacturing neighbors here. I suppose also having a relationship with companies based around you and becomes a perhaps a knock on effect in terms of sustainability and the ways that companies think about the environment. Have you noticed that? Yeah,、uh, sure. Of course, we we even cooperate on many issues, and this is also one of the reasons why we joined the. RE 100. Why we transfer all our electricity consumption to renewable sources? That's why we always try to come up with new technologies, new solutions. And can you just give us the the goals of the RE 100 initiative? The idea is that、uh, the big companies join together under this initiative. First of all, they consume only the renewable energy, and second, which is probably more important, they lobby or do different activities. Focused on the promotion of green energy, communicate with state level persons to make the playing field level for everyone, to give space for much higher use of the renewable energy. In some sense, is the Czech factory a, a bit of a poster? Do you feel as though you're leading the way here? Definitely. Already since January the first, two thousand twenty-two. One hundred percent of our electricity consumption comes from the renewable sources, and we are the first plant, and there are fifteen of them in the whole world, and we are the first one to have one hundred percent of that. So, Petr, zooming in on the plant now, can you give us a vision? Really, walk us around, because this place is where new technologies are at work. So, what are we looking at? What are we seeing? What makes it exciting? Give us the vision of the factory, if you would. So the most fascinating thing about the factory is, I think, and probably every visitor can confirm, is the the level of automation, the cleanliness, not only in the production floor but looking around the whole factory, including all the environment, and of course the logistics, which really enables you to see the new car leaving the line every minute. I would say all the visitors really. Appreciate that when we are talk about the sustainability, but you can really see our efforts in the area. When we started the construction, actually the first thing we did is that we replanted more than one thousand trees, which were、uh, in the area where our plant was supposed to be built. We didn't need to replant the trees, but this is something where where we wanted to preserve the the heritage. And the second, it is great when you can see even in the new factory. You can walk around and see the, the the trees which are already grown and just work together with the new ones. Yeah, it sounds like it's created a, a a lovely environment. But I'm just still wondering in my head around your factory, the virtual reality aspects and the robotics of the manufacturing. How many robots are there, and how is VR used in the factory? You know, it's always better to see it. So、uh, I'd like to encourage anyone who's near our factory. Uh, who by by chance happens to be to be somewhere around? We organize the site tours for public、uh, twice per week, so so everybody is welcome. But、um, robotics is something which really I would say stands out in、uh, this factory. We have more than five hundred robots. Out of them, only in the welding shop is、uh, I think three hundred eighty-five. In the paint shop, you can see really the development which we did over the years. There were some positions where the paint was done by our employees. But currently, there is not the manual spraying anymore, and we have more than 100 robots which do only the painting of the car bodies. So, of course, the robots do the work which is the most difficult for humans or 
which would require some special heavy equipment. So it's a big help that we can give the work to the people, which the people, I would say, would somehow enjoy working on that and leave the really hard work on the robots. And uh, I think you asked about the virtual reality as well. Yeah, I just wondered how that was used. The virtual reality is something which we've been uh, seeing for a couple of years already. There are different possibilities how to use that. For us, the one thing which makes most sense is uh, the usage in the uh, safety trainings. You know, the, I already said many times that the factory is very, uh, very modern, uh, very safe and so on. But we still employ more than 3,000 people. And we need to make sure that they get home safe from the factory and really try to do maximum to protect their health. But maybe you can imagine that the, the safety trainings are usually very boring. They are very important, but it's rather difficult to make it somehow interesting. And the virtual reality is a very good contribution to this because the people can see something new. They can do the trainings in a completely different way than they were used to. And uh, we really think this is one way how we can use this new technology to do something better for our people. I guess that uh, always when something's a bit more interesting, it, it stays with you for longer, doesn't it? So to have another take on that is probably good for training. You talked a little bit before about the electricity used from renewable sources. Can you go into perhaps a, a little bit more detail on that for us now? Sure. As I said, it's uh, about purchasing the electricity. Uh, so, of course, there is no renewable sources uh, power plant just next to our factory. So we are connected to the standard grid. But by the fact that we are buying the guarantees of origins means that the network operator guarantees that the amount of uh, energy which we consume will be purchased by our electricity supplier only from the renewable energy producers. And then it will be the same amount of energy will be delivered to us. So we don't have the exact information. What is the production mix of the electricity? Because of course, the electricity boundaries are not limited by the Czech borders. All the electricity network is connected. So the electricity can come either from some local biogas plants or it can come from different uh, water, wind or solar power plants, I would say basically all around Europe. But this would be, I would say, too simple to focus on, on buying the renewable energy. For us, the big task is to decrease the energy consumption. You know, we are constantly working on implementing new technologies which has lower energy demands. For example, just in last four years, we managed to decrease our energy consumption by 10%. We still want to do more. And when we said about the electricity, we have really big plans in building our own solar power plant, our own photovoltaics plant. Because you can imagine the whole area of our plant is around 200 hectares. Even the size of our roofs is really, uh, really big. And this is the, the great place for, for putting the photovoltaic panels. I can see you smiling there and you speak with great passion about the project that obviously has been very successful so far and ongoing. So I want to just get a little bit more about you, Petter, if, if that's OK, if I may. Has sustainability always been important to you personally? I would take it from two points of view. One is that uh, I'm the local guy from this region. So it's very important for me, especially with regards to our factory, that the factory is sustainable and is, is going on well with all we can see around. And it is especially because this region is on one side beautiful mountains, but just a little bit farther, mm -hmm. uh, we can see the landscape, which was heavily affected by coal mining. There was a really extensive black coal mining in this area. And especially when I was a child, the coal mining was at its peak. So you can see that many nice places have been devastated. Some towns were even moved to different locations because of this human activity. And when Hyundai came to this region, it was kind of turning point because that was the time when the coal mines were already closed for being non-effective anymore. And Hyundai came with completely different industry, with uh, completely new technologies. And it started to change 
um, I would say the, even the atmosphere in the uh, in the whole region. I think many people expect that when you work in the automotive industry, you must be a, a kind of petrol head or some keen driver. This is not exactly yeah. my my case. Okay, I, I love driving my car, but frankly, I prefer to be a passenger. And the relation to sustainability is that I'm I've been and I think I still am a really keen hitchhiker, and I've traveled really the, the whole Europe. By hitchhiking, of course, this is already a couple of years ago, but this is some way which is has some relation to the sustainability because it's always better to share the ride than riding alone. Of course, for me, the hitchhiking is mostly the social aspect, but that's something I, I really, really feel like a very good way how to go this way. Petty, you are most definitely the first guest we've had on this podcast who has, has talked in this way about cars. Certainly the only person I've spoken to, I think, that prefers... <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought it's better than... than, than no, it's, with... it's, it's really fascinating, but you're the first person that prefers to be a passenger rather than being in control of the car, which is interesting in itself, I think. When yeah. you were growing up, what kind of upbringing did you have and what were your dreams and aspirations as a, as a child or teenager? Yeah, it's uh, th that's maybe one more reason uh, why I prefer to be a passenger because I grew up in the train family. My father was a train driver, so I also traveled a lot by trains and I, I really like trains. But I always aspire for the, I would say, the, the highest level of mobility. I wanted to be an astronaut, but only until the moment when I realized that at that time in the socialist Czechoslovakia, I would have to join the army to achieve that goal and that seemed like too much of a sacrifice for me <laughs> so so <laughs> so I, i ended up uh, being a lawyer <laughs> from astronaut to lawyer that yeah, that yeah. is some difference isn't it really <laughs> but yeah i can see the stumbling block that you had uh, to try and get yourself into space but um some stratospheric uh, jumps you've been mm. taking uh, in your career anyway and, and with your achievements personal connection is is always very uh, important isn't it you're leading the way in sustainability but you've got to bring people with you on the journey um rather than you hopping in their car for hitchhiking you're bringing people with you how are you demonstrating that your responsibilities go beyond the cars and beyond the vehicles really well that's a really big part of our sustainability work uh we focus a lot on the future generation and our community and we have really many, many programs which aim to educate uh, the children, educate other people in the community. We try to educate them in technical sciences because we will definitely need technical experts for our factory. But uh, we try to promote uh, many things related to environment. We try to engage our employees. We try to engage the people from the local municipalities. And what is personally great for me is to see how active they are they are not waiting for us to organize something but they keep coming to us with their own ideas and and suggestions and uh, frankly speaking sometimes it's very difficult to manage because there are so many people with great ideas so out of our projects i would mention one of the the latest which is quite big and it's the biodiversity project and it connects many many fields one is that we support the local ngo which focuses on the nature protection And I said that one nice part of this region is the Beskidi Mountains. And we focus on the restoration of the old meadows to make them really diverse, make them grow different plants and be a, be a home for different animals. And this is partially done by the NGO, partially by our volunteers who can get a day off from the work and go instead uh, work in the mountains. But it is also connected to our plant itself because in the area we have some uh, green fields which for example we don't uh, cut uh, the grass because it's a home for many protected species or it can be a home for migrating birds and we are quite fond of them so we let's say protect the, this this local small environment for them i spoke about the planted trees we do many things which might look small like we install some uh, bird houses we install some houses for insects but this all helps the environment here to develop. So we are really trying to connect many areas where we think uh, we can get some, some good achievement. So am I right in thinking that local school children are involved in these projects and that's part of their curriculum to work with you as well on, on these eco-friendly ideas and, and these biodiversity projects? 
Definitely, yes. It's school children. It's any other inhabitants of the local municipalities. It's the member of, of different groups. Just organize. It can be local firemen. It can be football clubs or something like that. Because all of them have the willingness and they, they know, for example, what can be improved in their area. And uh, we can support them financially. We can support them uh, with also our volunteers. It works nicely together. And uh, that's what I was talking about, that we are an integral part of our community. We are the part of the life. What is good for us could be good for the others. We need to influence each other, help the community, because this will bring us back something which we may need later. So if we invest in the local community, uh, we will see it uh, returning in uh, having uh, good and happy employees. We will have good relations all around. This all can make us do our business better and the community will profit from us being here. Petter, this podcast is called Are We There Yet? I'd say sustainability is an ongoing challenge for the world, but how do you see it from Hyundai's perspective? Well, we've mentioned already some goals which are a couple of years or even a couple of decades ahead of us. So uh, definitely we can't say that uh, we are uh, we are there. And as you suggested, I don't think we ever want to be at some final distance if it comes to sustainability. I think the sustainability is about keeping the, the progress, having uh, the, the humanity and the earth ready for further development. So on one hand, I'm looking forward to reach the goals which we have now, but I'm even more excited by maybe seeing the new goals which will come and uh, which will be definitely uh, challenging and great to work on them. Well, it's been absolutely fascinating listening to the picture that you've painted. Good luck with the initial challenges and the future challenges and the one you don't even know. Petter Michnig, thank you so much for talking to me. It's been an absolute pleasure. The pleasure was mine. Thank you very much. If you're excited by cutting edge technology, electric vehicles, sustainability and the projects that Hyundai are leading, then you can find out more at Hyundai.com. And make sure you follow or subscribe to the Are We There Yet podcast from your usual podcast providers. It means that you'll never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.